this video is to initially show you how to produce a column graph and then to look at that, why you would carry out a t-test, carry out the t-test and determine if the data is significantly different or not. In this case, you have two sets of data. I acknowledge I made this data up. This is not something you would do for any lab report. This is just for explanation uh, of this process. It's looking at the mass of Skittles, comparing green Skittles against red Skittles. Is there a difference between the masses? More importantly, is there a significant difference? I need to gra I graph the mean for green Skittles against red Skittles. I will use Excel's formulas to produce this. It is average, unfortunately, not mean, which Excel uses. You highlight the data which you want to want, which is the data for the green skittle in this case. I'm going to drag this across and I'll give you the mean for the red skittles. Here you can see you have 1.29, 1.47. These means are quite close, but is there a significant difference between them? You also need your standard deviation. Again, use the formula function from Microsoft Excel. Equal STDEV. Highlight the data which you want the standard deviation for. Press enter and you have this. Drag this across and you have it for both cases. From this suggests the data for red skittles is less reliable. This means there's a wider range. However, to determine if there's a significant difference between these two sets of data, I need to graph the mean masses of the green skittles and red skittles on a column graph. This is discontinuous data, a comparison. Highlight what you want to graph. You do not include the standard deviation. What you're looking at is the means. We will come back to the standard deviation. Insert. You obviously want to insert a graph and you want a clustered column. You can be fancy and do a 3D column, but there is nothing wrong with the normal, simple clustered column. Note that this is close to 1.3, which makes sense. This is close to 1.47, which makes sense. There are some things we'll fix on the graph later. I need to put on add titles. Here, put on a meaningful title. That is not saying that you should use simply meaningful title as your title. Relate what you're investigating. Looking at the independent and the dependent variables. You need to put on axes titles. The primary horizontal axes, better known hopefully to you as the x-axes, in this case what you changed was the color of the skittle. You also need your y-axis or your primary vertical axis. What was measured here in, um, is your mass of the skittle. However, what, your, what the graph represents is the mean mass. Notice that I have also included the precision error of the instrument, the balance, and of course the unit. This graph looks reasonably good, but I need to determine if this data is there, if there's an overlap between these two sets of data. I need to add standard deviations. Click on either of the two columns. You will then see data points being marked around it. You want to again go to chart design, add error bars, choose more error bar options, and then you choose custom. Not standard deviation, you choose custom. You specify your values. Click on this little box here, highlight your standard deviations, Repeat the same for the negative error bar.
and you have got your standard deviation error bars. Check, do they make sense? Your mean here is 1.29. That looks about correct. Your standard deviation is about 0.14. 1.29 plus 1.24 is about 1.33. That makes sense. This error bar goes up to it goes up about the appropriate amount and it goes down the appropriate amount. This one should have a difference of 0.84 and this appears to be correct. Just going to add a couple of things to make the graph look a little bit better. I personally like my grid lines. Include all the primary, um, minor and major grid lines. This is a nice graph. However, there's a problem with your numbers on your y-axis. You recorded data to two decimal places. The precision of your process data is at two decimal places. It's important that you also include this information here. It has to be to two decimal places. Um, it is on the axis options. You choose the little graph you choose number. You don't want general, you actually want number. You choose a number of decimal places. Again, your raw data has two decimal places, your process data has two decimal places, your y-axis should also have two decimal places. No need to change. Now note all of these are as you desire. By making these changes, you will note as well that the first um, part of the graph is 0, 0.00. This can also be modified in those same options. However, now do I need to carry out a t-test? I'm looking at the two sets of data. The means are close. This may suggest a t-test is necessary. The error bars overlap. This suggests that a t-test is most definitely necessary. A t-test will determine if there is a statistically significant difference between these two means based on the data that we've collected. A t-test is relatively easy to carry out. You again use the formula function on Excel. You can go insert formula. or insert function, sorry. You choose your function, t-test. It is most recently used in mine, but if you put in two t's, you will get the t-test. Click on it. They ask you for array one. This is your first set of data. In this case, the green skittles. Highlight the green skittles, and that is array one completed. For array 2, alternatively, I could just click on this and I will highlight the red skittles. These are my two arrays. Tails. If you look down below, you will find there is information on tails. You can look for more detail on, detail on this, but um, take it from me, for all the data you're looking at, it will be two tails. It's a normal distribution for both sets of data. Again, there are different options for the type. Your data, you're assuming it's equivariance, you have equal sets of data, you choose two. So again, highlighting what needs to be here. You need to include the set of data for your first version of the variable. You need to include your set of data for your second version of the variable and at the moment always take tails and type as two. Press done and you get 0 0.5. I suggest turning this into a percentage. Format this. So you format the cell
at least I hope to format the cell. I'm going to copy this into the one below it. I'm not sure why it's not working and I get 48.4%. The reason for this is the cell is formatted so that um, I'm looking at number and I have percentage. I'm not sure why it did not work in this situation here. It should. This percentage is important. Important With the null hypothesis, you have, sorry, with the t-test, you have two options. The null hypothesis, there is no significant difference between the two groups. That is the mean mass of the green skittles and the mean mass of the red skittles is not statistically different. The alternative hypothesis is there is a significance between the two groups. This means the masses are significantly different. Looking at my graph, despite the means being different, the very fact that the error bars very clearly overlap, this suggests that the null hypothesis is the one which needs to be accepted. We look at a probability of 5%. This is a 1 in 20 chance of getting this data by chance. If you are below that, we simply accept the data is significantly different. If you're above 5%, we accept that the data is not significantly different. In this case, we have 48.4%. This is greater than 5%, therefore we accept the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is very clearly um, saying there is no significant difference between the mass of the of the green skittles and red skittles based on the data that we have. I'm going to change this data to make the difference significant. Note as I change the data, every time the column graph changed. It's still the type of graph that I want, but it changed. The error bar um, also changed. In this case, the error bars don't quite overlap, so it's a reasonable assumption the alternative hypothesis is to be um, accepted. As I change these, do note that these numbers are changing down here as well. I've got a mean of 3.31. That is significantly different than red skittles. I get a T value of 0.1%. 0.1% is less than 5%. Therefore, I accept the alternative hypothesis. With this set of data, there is now a significant difference between the groups. Again, as always, you can simply take this graph, copy and paste it into a Word document. On your report, you should most definitely have this information. You should refer to both the null hypotheses and the alternative hypotheses. Do give the acceptance levels for both. That is the probability is greater than 5% or the probability is less than 5%.